Welcome to the Rock Live Podcast. My name is Antonio, and we are here for yet another episode where we are enjoying ourselves going into our sermon rewinds this week as we rewind from our sermon. I'm here with Pastor Dan. Hello, everybody. How you doing, Pastor Dan? I'm well. We kicked off a series. New series, three parts. A new series, and we were talking about the anger of God. What makes God angry? And I love it because... There was no going around it. I think you started off the series pointing out how it's it's kind of not the, the most popular. You know, if you Google what sermon series should I do at my church, <laughs> you're not going to find the wrath of God. I God subscribe <laughs> to some some websites that help with sermon prep. Yeah. And, you know, mainly for stories. And sometimes people wonder, where do you get all your stories from? Yeah. So I've got a couple websites yeah. that I go to. And uh, and my jokes, too. I get a lot of my jokes from one of them in particular. But uh, they have, like, you know, the little sermon help packets and things like that. And usually it's, like, love, (laughs) grace, you know, the amazing Jesus. Right, right. Not the anger of God. I haven't (laughs) seen one on the wrath of God. Right, no, well, and so, again, we've been pointing this out all throughout the book of Romans. We're not skipping any verses. We're not, you know, we're not afraid of the word. And so there's good news in it all. Yeah. And and sometimes it's just like, OK, so but again, that was uh, I, I, I liken this series to an airplane ride because we're going somewhere. It's going to be a yes. three part. You yes. Said. Yeah. But this part one seemed like the, the turbulent takeoff were not turbulent, but you're taking off. You're speeding off. You're like, where, where are we going? Well, so, for anybody who's had that experience of being on a plane for the very first time, that takeoff is shocking. Yeah, right. It, yeah. It's just it pushes you back in your mm-hmm. seat and your eyes widen and you uh, grip the yeah. armrest and you're looking out yeah. the window to make sure that the plane isn't <laughs> falling to pieces, you know. But then once you get up in the air, it kind of softens. Yeah, right. So, I, you know, I would imagine, yeah, this this weekend's message probably was a powerful push Mm -hmm. and an eye opener to a lot of people. Um, And, and hopefully by the end of the sermon, it it smoothed out because they realized God's anger is tied to what he loves. Yes. You know, and, and that is a comforting fact that, that God is angry about the things that come against our lives. Yeah. Well, in in talking about anger, let's have some full transparency moments. Uh, What, what have been some of our own faux pas in anger or wrath? Because you make this distinction because sometimes our context for wrath and anger is our fleshly anger that we have. Yes. So what have been maybe some fleshly or carnal oh, gosh. instances of anger or wrath? You know, what's crazy is we're talking about this last night. Yeah. My daughter, right before I'm going to bed, texts about uh, a problem with email. Yeah. And anybody who has been around me knows that there's nothing that can get on my nerves more than technology that doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, it's like trying to uh, to work with computers and things like that. Just try to do little things, you know, like get a picture off of a, uh, you know, phone to yeah. the, the computer or something like that so that I can edit it and, you know, whatever. Uh, and that stuff drives me nuts when it doesn't work and it takes forever. I remember I bought a new computer one time thinking that it would be faster and all that kind of stuff. And then I installed like the, uh, you know, the malware yeah, and the ad yeah, blockers yeah. and all that kind of and it bogged the computer down so much that it would take just like an hour to just boot up the com- a brand new computer. And I'm like, this is yeah. stupid. So yeah. that's where I'm like happy to have right. the phone and the, you know, yeah. everything now, um, even on the, the, the tablets is going so fast mm-hmm. uh, that, that we skip a lot of that stuff. So my daughter texted me last night. I'm getting ready to go to bed. We've, we've prayed with the boys. Yeah. We're, I'm literally shutting the house down, locking yeah. doors and yeah. turning out lights. And I get this text message like, uh, you know, hey, dad. Um, I'm, I'm having trouble with my email, which I helped her set yeah. it up before she left be, so that she could get emails from her school, from mm. her college. Well, now she's got a job and the job wants her to have this app. And in order to get the app, you've got to get the email and you got to log in through the email to get the app, to get your hours and all that <laughs> kind of stuff, right? So it, it it's supposed to yeah. make life easier, right. but she's like, I'm not getting the email. I'm like, okay. So she calls my wife and we get on the phone with her and uh, she's like, dad, did you set up blockers on my email when you set up my email now mind you this is two years ago yeah i have no idea what i did when i set up her email you know (laughs) but i do know that she was going into adulthood she's going to be going to college this is her email address it's not mine she's an adult uh and email isn't like you know the internet yeah Yeah, yeah. it's it's i i probably didn't put anything on it you know so i'm telling her no and and you know (laughs) 
she starts to get annoyed because she's trying to get this email and she's had this problem before with other people trying to send her something, you know, whether it be here at the church for volunteering or different things yeah. like that. And so she's like, I never got their email and it was, you know, and so now I'm having this problem with work, but I need it because I'm starting next week and I'm yeah. like, okay, I can't do anything about that. <laughs> like figure it out, kid. You know, yeah. like I, you have the password. Right. I don't, I don't even know her password, right. you know, yeah. you've got it. So like, go on. It w- and then she's like, well, is there a setting? Is there something? I said, honey, I don't know. I, Honestly, when I use my email, I use the email like app that I have on my phone. And if I have to go into the actual email right. and like look through it, I have no idea what to do. You know, I was trying to give someone permissions to my calendar the yeah. other day and it was like, you know, reading Greek and hieroglyphics. You know, I, I just yeah. I couldn't find the button. I yeah. couldn't find the setting. I finally had to go to uh, one of our support staff yeah. here and they were like, oh, I, I got it. And I, I feel I feel I'm, I feel so validated because I'm I'm the same. I, I appreciate technology. I kind of understand it, but all the back end, I don't like to do any of that. I, yeah, no, seriously. Just work. <laughs> and that's my thing is like, okay, so you're, you you have the email address, you yeah. have the password, you have that back end. Right. Figure it out. Like, yeah. click every tab, look at every button. Uh, you know, see what's going on there. Yeah. And and I and she was like, I I check my spam folder. I check the junk. I check the trash i check in in the emails not anywhere so you know we got into it and she's like i don't think that i deserve to be talked to you know i'm just like oh seriously you're gonna get (laughs) after you threw that attitude at me yeah yeah yeah. and so we were texting back and forth before bed and i told her i'm sorry you know uh and she's like if i was disrespectful please forgive me and i'm like no forgive me she's like i forgive you i'm like i forgive you too you know so we had our little moment did you feel yourself like were you getting red were you like were you no i wasn't like i i i I walked away you know what i mean i was like i'm gonna go lock up these other doors i'm gonna take the dogs out to go to the bathroom before bed and you know i i just left jessica with that conversation because i'm like I I can't go, like get in an argument about email. I gotta go to bed. Well, you know? and I know and people who know you know you like your sleep too. Like so, if you're tired, right? You want you want to get to sleep. Like, yeah, that's, I your mean, mind like, is kind of like on. Yeah, you, you know, we talked in the in the message we talked about Mama Bear. Right. There's no better way to make a dad angry than to wake him up, right? Yeah, and and yeah. that's like you've awakened the bear. Right, you know right. what I mean? And so yeah, I mean it, it is a family. So of bears. Mama Bear and then dads hibernate. And dads so dad. are hibernating. <laughs> yeah, and so and, and normally I'm a night owl, but yeah. uh, you know just with the school you're starting up and and all the yeah. things that we've been having to do, I've having to been wake up early, mm-hmm. and um, you know like with the sun, you know, and so. We're, we're getting up early doing everything. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm getting ready for bed. And we've had a long day. Um, you know, uh, it's just been a lot. We've done different things throughout the day and travel and, and exercise and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. ready. You know, yeah. and, I, and I actually was like, I'm going to go to bed early so that when I get up in the morning, it's not going to be so bad. Not, and, and then now here I'm stressed out about emails. And I'm just like, I, I don't need this stress in my life, you know. So yeah, I got I got a bit angry about that and yeah. uh, expressed it with uh, terse words to my daughter over yeah. the phone. So if you're listening, my beautiful daughter, I love you and I'm sorry. But well, it happens to everyone, Pastor Dan. It's okay. You know? Thank you. I, I, we'll just let you be. Man. I, <laughs> I, Angelina has caught me. I I've gotten angry in the parking lot and at church, and she's Ooh. like, "Babe, people are because I sometimes I." can resort to yelling and but what i'm seeing is the idea that we model behavior and i have to remember that because now all of a sudden i see my kids uh yeah want to yell and i'm just like where do you get that from and my wife just looks at me like, like oh she's yeah she's like i'm not the only one who has yeah. a <laughs> feisty personality there so i could i can definitely um and the thing is when i feel upset i i think i do lose the fact that we're in public we're at church we're That's at funny. <laughs> Like, so, I just kind of don't have... So my beautiful helpmate often <laughs> will look at me in that moment and say, Pastor Dan. <laughs> you know, and it's like, ah! Yeah, she's like, you're at church. I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah. But then my pride goes, I don't care. <laughs> but then I'm really, like, embarrassed. <laughs> she, she, my wife does that when we're alone, too. It's not, not just in public. She'll do that when we're alone. Pastor right, Dan. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. listen, not right now. That's not fair. Yeah. Well, I, aren't you glad that we are not... Uh, well, we're not God yet. Well, we're not. I'm sorry. Wait. Whoa. Wow. Where is this one going? This podcast just took I know. a turn. <laughs> uh, God is not like us. Right. Yes. God, and, God and he's is, not finished with right, us yet. Yes, I think that maybe not, where, that's what I was saying. Thank you, you for fixing yeah. that. For and like, wait, what? What am I watching? Sorry. What am I listening to? <laughs> um, so uh, but this weekend we saw in Scripture, in God's word, in Romans, um, 
And it, it, it's so simple. It's so clear. But I thought you explained it to us, too, about. So what is it? Because because the question goes, all right, so what am I supposed to do with this? What, what do Yeah, I, I think that was the, the emphasis that I was trying to bring at the end of the message. Obviously, right. we took a lot of time unpacking mm-hmm. the wrath of God because right. it is a, a huge subject. There is a lot to say about it, mm-hmm. a lot of confusion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, um, people think that God was the angry God of the Old Testament and the loving God of the New Testament. Right. Uh, the, the problem with that is that God is consistent throughout. Mm-hmm. He is a loving Old Testament God and an angry New Testament right. God. Right. A- and people don't see that. Uh, that that he's both mm-hmm. right. He's mm-hmm. loving and angry, and he's loving and angry. Right. Old and New Testament. He's consistent yeah. in, in in those characteristics, and so we had to find what what does make God angry, mm-hmm. right? And we saw ungodliness and unrighteousness, those two things that are expressed in suppression of the truth. Mm-hmm. That, that there is a truth of God that can be known, mm-hmm. and we're going to get into this in, in this next part. There is yeah. a truth of God that can be known. Yeah. But if we're ungodly, which means without God, and if we're unrighteous, meaning that we are not righteous, mm-hmm. uh, we're not right, if you yeah. will, in position and practice, then we will take that truth that can be known and we'll hold it down and we'll hinder the progress of it. Right. And, and I think that's where when God sees truth being hindered, mm-hmm. he knows the root of that, whether it's from people that are trying to do life apart from him, ungodly, or whether it, where it's people want to have him in their life as a token— but do their own thing their own way, yeah. which this week in particular, uh, we're going to look at the excuses mm. where people will say, I've got God, but, yeah. right. you know, and there are some excuses that we're going to draw out. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but really, practically, when we look at the, the anger of God, what do we do with that? You right. know, and, I, and that was where I tried to center in. And, mm-hmm. and, and I had those two things, right? Yeah that we should get angry about what God gets angry about, right? right? And, and you mentioned this with your kids, right? Yeah. They're, they're, they're seeing behavior, and they're expressing it. Uh, you know, you were talking in the negative terms. Right, right. But I, I believe for us as oh, believers, yeah. when we see the righteousness of yeah, God, yeah. And, and even in our kids, there mm-hmm. are things that our kids should get angry about, right? right? right. Uh, and, and I've actually seen this in my own kids, especially as they've, they've grown into becoming teenagers and, you know, even uh, in adulthood and approaching mm-hmm. adulthood. Mm-hmm. There are things that they see that they get angry out about that I'm like good. Right. Uh, I'm glad that that bugs you. Right. You know. Uh, you know. Uh, I mentioned my daughter. She's in college. She's getting ready to vote this year. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. She needs to be moved mm-hmm. by what moves God right. Right. in order to have a godly understanding of the direction that her vote should take. Yeah. Her citizenship. How how does she? Uh, you know, live in this mm-hmm, world. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it should be on the college campus when other people are doing certain things. Right. Is she going to jump into that behavior with right. them or is she going to get angry about that? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, just, she goes to a Christian college. Just right. because they're on a Christian campus doesn't mean that everyone is godly. Right. There are Absolutely. ungodly people on that campus. Yeah. And then there are people who would say that they are godly, that they, they're around God or that they have God, but then they're unrighteous mm-hmm. in their activities. Yeah. You know, and they'll weep and cry about it and say, oh, I was wrong. And then they'll go and do it again. Yeah. You know, and and they suppress the truth. They hold that truth back. So in order to have that first step, yeah, we have to get angry about what God's angry about. Yes. Yeah. And and for me personally, you know, we're, since we're airing everything yeah. here, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I my personality and even my upbringing, you know, um, Oftentimes we were indifferent to things. Yeah, it was like if they want to be stupid, let them be stupid. Yeah, I, I'm not going to be moved by that. I'm just going to live my life, mm-hmm. you know. And and we call that just being, you know, uh, casual or, you know, I just I have a very chill personality yeah, or yeah. whatever that is. Um, but when you when you take a look at that, there are things that should move us, you know. Right. Uh, I I forget who said it. I, I believe it was one of the Holocaust survivors said that you know in order for good to uh, I'm sorry for in order for evil to succeed, right. good men just have to sit by and do nothing. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. That they wouldn't get angry about things. You know, um, one of the uh, I believe it was a rabbi was talking about that same time in World War II beforehand when they came for this group. You know, for the mm-hmm. Jews I said nothing. Yeah. When they came for yeah. you know these people I said nothing. And then finally they came for me. Mm-hmm. Right? Why? Because of indifference. Mm-hmm. They didn't get angry about right. Right. what was taking place at that time. And I think this similar thing can happen to us. We're overwhelmed with information. Mm-hmm. We see injustice all over right. every day. And then we're getting mad about things that are the wrong things to get mad about. Right, right. And we're not moved by what moves God, God's right, heart. Right. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a, a crazy thought. Well, let me ask you, because I think, you know, some of the questions 
that kind of come in and, and you alluded to it in the message because we have this uh, be, because we see we know god is love right and then again our context of what love is because of for whatever reason and, and a lot of it i think we judge rightly that love looks like some of this extra empathy and caring and so what is a a, a expression that is appropriate within the love of God when we are angry about something, but yet not being indifferent. Because I think on right. one side, how do I get angry about that and lovingly in godly love, right? Right. Yeah. Express that because, and I think you talked about in the message was, well, God doesn't express it the same as he did in the old Testament. He's not opening up the grounds and you, you know, you meant, you mentioned yeah. some of that. So is God's did God's expression of this anger does it look differently after Jesus or with a fulfilled law? And then, so what does that, how does that inform our lives and how we are living out when we are angry for the right reason? For example, like on a college campus or for our people listening or watching that work in places that st bad stuff is going yeah. on or ungodly things, unrighteousness is going on. So this is, this is part of the mystery of, of God. Some of the things that we don't know, that we don't see behind the scenes, right. uh, especially in, in, I believe, world events, mm -hmm. um, there may be expressions of God's anger that we see on the earth. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I can't say that mm -hmm. specifically or in particular. Um, it is telling mm -hmm. when you see a people turn their back on God, uh, forsake his ways, mm -hmm. and then you see things on the earth happen. I don't know if that's that's like the Old Testament expression that, right. that you, you no, cited right. with no, the ground yeah. opening up. Or, yeah, you know, yeah. Obviously, there were some specific things that took place. And even in the New Testament, you know, um, you see, like, for instance, uh, Herod, here he is, he puts Peter in jail. He, he's speaking to the people, the voice of God and not a man, yeah, and yeah. he's exalting himself in his shining, shimmering robe and on his throne. And an angel strikes him dead because right. you didn't give God glory, mm -hmm. right? That that's an expression mm -hmm. of the wrath of God against an ungodly man who was yeah. unrighteous, right? Who was suppressing the truth, right. trying to hold Peter back, who is uh, speaking the truth. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and you know, in that moment, we see something bad happen to somebody, and and God gives us the peek behind the curtain, if you will. So I do believe that there are certain things that happen on the earth, and I'm not gonna no, I get I, yeah. say that because some then then yes. somebody, well, God's so angry, right. he's yeah, just killing yeah. people, yeah, yeah. you know, and 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 you know, I I can't say for certain those right. things. However, there's another aspect of God that's revealed, and and speaking of Peter, Peter mm -hmm. wrote about this. Mm -hmm. Second Peter, he talks about how. Uh, you know, people will say, well, where is this coming that you've been talking about? You know, yeah. it's been, it, we can say now, and mm -hmm. in, in Peter's time, it was, you know, decades, right. if if you will. In art, it's millennia, right? Yeah. There's yeah. centuries yeah. that have gone into thousands of years yeah. now that people will actually say, well, where is this coming that he promised? And, and, and Peter says, don't you realize that he's patiently waiting? Right. Because it's not God's will that, that any be lost. Mm -hmm. God does not delight in sending people to hell. Right. He does not delight when the unrighteous die. It's, it's all throughout the scriptures, Old Testament and mm -hmm. New Testament mm -hmm. now, right? And, and so I believe that God is angry over sin and unrighteousness and ungodliness and those things, the suppression of truth that we talked about. But he's patiently waiting. Yeah. And that wrath, the Bible talks about being stored up, mm -hmm. which should scare the socks off of us, right? <laughs> I mean, that that is a scary expression. If yeah. you think about wrath being expressed, right. you know, like a pressure release, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I'd almost rather, like, give it to me in little right. doses, right. Right. but don't store it up, right. you know? Because you just spank me now. Just spank me exactly. now. Exactly. <laughs> like, 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 let's just get it over <laughs> yeah. with yeah. while, you you know, it's yeah. not that bad. And, and uh, but, I mean, when you store something up, I mean, you, you think about, again, our context is the unrighteous wrath of mm -hmm. man, right? Yeah. And, and I think about people boiling over and blowing up, or they... They've let things go on long enough, and then they just go ballistic. God's not like that, obviously. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. we, we talked about this. He's controlled, he's reasonable, and he's righteous, right? Yeah. So so with that, his control is is that he's storing this up because there is a day that the wrath of God will be poured out. Yeah. And, I mean, just look in Revelation, the, the bowls of God's wrath mm -hmm. being poured out on the earth, and what happens when those bowls are poured out? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You know, it, it's going to be crazy. Mm -hmm. it, it's It's you know, in, in every term, apocalyptic, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, we're we're going to see things that we've never seen before. We're, we're going to experience tremendous things on the earth. Now, we're not appointed to wrath right. as Christians, 
and as believers. So, uh, you know, when people take a look at the rapture and when, when are people going to be taken, some people say pre-trib, some people say mid-trib, some people pay to- post-trib. I, I don't know about that. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, my thing is be ready, ready mm-hmm. rapture, you know, and right. be ready for, for yeah. any of those scenarios. Yeah. However, I do know we won't be there for the wrath of God right. because we're not appointed to wrath. Right. So that means that for these things that we're seeing of the, of the ungodly and the unrighteous, we know that that wrath is being stored up that that wine press, the grapes of wrath will be trodden, mm-hmm. those bowls will be filled, and then they'll be poured out as punishment on the ungodly yeah. and the unrighteous. Yeah. And they, it'll be so bad that they're going to be yelling at the mountains, come and fall on us and hide us from the face of the, the Messiah, right? It, that, to me, should scare anyone into thinking twice about right. their stance on whether or not they want to be right. an atheist, an agnostic, you know, <laughs> uh, or indifferent. Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, and, and again, I think... Especially, I, I know what confronted me was, like you're saying, indifference and just the the awareness that I now have, because I know God doesn't desire us to be you know, in, scared in the sense like of what you're saying, but just like the, the, the fear, a healthy fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord. A, a healthy fear of the Lord. Like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to be on your wrong side. In fact, I want to be right. so near to you that this is, but at the same time, now my love for people wants to not have anyone right like you yes. said not that any should right experience this in this way because right because we love people like the way god loves well people. that's what the apostle paul said he said this we compel men be knowing right. the terror of yes. the lord right that we're we're actually in fear all reverence respect those mm-hmm. those great words of mm-hmm. the the fear of the lord but also i'm afraid right there there actually is like a a trembling fear mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. Uh, to tremble at God's word, yeah, because we know what's going to happen in the end times, and we know the power and the right. severity right. of the things that we're talking about and looking forward to. That that with a fearful expectation, right? Mm-hmm. That that says, okay, so I'm either going to fear God, be in awe and respect and honor and reverence of Him, and I'm going to tremble at His word, or a fearful expectation of judgment. Yeah knowing that the wrath of God is being stored up and that it will be poured out, and that if I'm not right, then that's, I'm going to participate in that. Right. That should terrify us enough mm-hmm. to say, well, then I, I, I'm not going to do my thing. Well, which leads right into what your second point was, that it should dictate our actions. Yes. Understanding yeah. God's wrath and understanding this anger with this new understanding and grasping, not, not in the way that, Oh my gosh, you know, you know, we're so doubtful of ourselves all no. the time, right? Because I don't yeah. think that would—that's the idea that we should wake up, like, oh my gosh, did I, did I make God angry today? Is, or you know, is, am I going to get no. swallowed? But in the sense of a healthy fear of the Lord, yes, and it's, and understanding this, it will direct my actions and I, how I yeah. treat people and how I think I love it speaks people. more to urgency. You yeah. know, um, I know when I see passion or anger or you know intensity in a situation with people when they're expressing the severity of the situation, mm-hmm. it, it raises my level of urgency. Yeah, It actually uh, brings me up to the point where I say, I wasn't giving the right value or attention to that subject, but now that I see the anger behind mm-hmm. what they're saying, and I see the injustice over here, or whatever's going on, uh, the indifference that you know has been taking place, but now we're angry about this, and, and when I feel that and when that, that I, I see the, the rationality of mm-hmm. that, then it, it raises my level of uh, intention, yeah. focus, yes. you know, those types of things. I think the anger of God is, is the same way, that when we see what God, makes God angry, it should give us that, hey, I need to pay attention here. Mm-hmm. I need to give more focus, more intentionality towards movement in this area. Yeah. You know, um, knowing that sin angers God should, should help me to focus— and to have more intentionality of staying away from sin, yeah. right? And, and that's where being godly, being right. righteous, um, you know, those are those are the positive expressions right. of the anger of God in our lives that, hey, I'm going to be a more godly person because I know that God hates sin, right? and it makes him angry. I know that I'm going to be more intentional when I go to church about unity because I know that God hates mm-hmm. division right. and people who sow division, right? You know, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to really focus in those areas and endeavor to keep unity and peace, which, right. you know, is all woven throughout the New Testament. Book right. of Romans, we'll, we'll see that later on in the book about, uh, you know, being a people who endeavor to keep the bond of unity right. and peace right. rather than allow division to be, you know, sown into our ranks because God hates it. Mm-hmm. And because God hates it, it angers him. And so I'm going to be intentional 
about keeping short accounts, apologizing, mm-hmm. forgiving, yeah. uprooting bitterness. Th- those are all good things for right. us as believers, all produced by right. the focus from the anger of God. Well, and I love that because it, it takes the emphasis off of the, the scary outcomes and it brings it back to just a very practical daily life yeah. routines. Oh, wait, God doesn't like, uh, you know, some some of the things that, you know, because most people aren't thinking about the coming wrath no. or angers and and and. and but you are thinking about when you wake up and go to school or work or wherever you go on a day to day, the people yet you're going to be around the potential strife and division and anger and opportunities yeah. for gossip or any. And, and we understand now I can understand there's God hates these things. Right. Why he hates these things. And now I can change my approach to them. Yeah. Right. It's going to change my action. So then when I see other people doing it. It's going to, because I know it hates God, I'm going to hate it. And now, not that I'm self-righteously pointing out at everybody, but rather I'm adding a solution to tweak. Yeah. Hey, guys, let's change the subject. Let's do this. You know, not, and I think that's the bow, the, what is it, brow beating Christians of just right. pointing out yeah. someone's fault. Don't you know God is angry when he, and, and I'm not saying that there's not a time and place, but rather redirecting I, I think it's it focuses the expression in the godly way. So, for instance, a, you know, a very sensitive topic would be divorce, right? right? Mm-hmm. People who go through divorce are are devastated. You know, it it shreds a covenant, mm-hmm. and the people involved, no one wins in that. You know, I won the kids, and you didn't win. Right. Your kids are are hurting. Yeah, you know, and uh, and and I won the house. You know, great. In the midst of that, you you lost a beautiful covenant that mm-hmm. God joined together, and He says, "Let no man separate." Now, that's not to lump guilt or condemnation on people that are listening that have have been divorced. It's just to identify the devastation that comes with mm-hmm. divorce, and because of that devastation, the Bible clearly states that God hates divorce. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I believe the the central reason for that is because marriage is a picture of Christ in the church. Right. And so anything that comes against that, God would be angry with, mm-hmm. right? So it, it's not necessarily that God hates divorcees or mm-hmm. people, right, mm-hmm. that are that are experiencing these things. And, and Jesus himself said, hey, if there's marital unfaithfulness, infidelity, right, yeah. that's going on, then it's it's allowable. It's mm-hmm. acceptable in those terms, right? And and so, you know, even, even remarriage, a lot of times people get under guilt and condemnation because they— they read the scriptures, but but even that, you know, in First Corinthians, it talks about that. So this is not to, to cast a shadow on any one person, but let's go back to the root of what we were talking about. God hates divorce, therefore, I'm going to focus with intentionality on my marriage. Mm. I'm going to yep. come against the things that would come against my marriage. Mm. I'm going to guard my eyes that I'm not looking at other women and yeah. that, you know, there's not, uh, you know, the, those emotional attachments that could come to the the, the individuals in the marriage. I'm not going to allow other people to speak ungodliness into this marriage. We're going to, with intentionality, go on dates and have hard conversations. You know, just mm-hmm. just yesterday, my wife and I had a difficult conversation. It was, it was difficult to get out, and there were definitely feelings involved and things like that. But at the root of it, uh, when we got down to it, we realized that the root of it was our security, mm-hmm. uh, our roles as mm-hmm. husband and wife, mm-hmm. Um, provider protector role of a man yeah. you know there were there were deep rooted things involved in that and it was good for us to express our passions and get angry even yeah. and uh, you know even even uh, on my end feeling respected mm-hmm. as a man and things like that 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 are important to our marriage and and my wife was able to express those things that that she saw and we were able to work through those things on, on that level because we were protecting mm-hmm. Our marriage, our home, our values, those things, but our passions were expressed, and, and we were we were angry about certain things, but when we expressed them in the positive way, the righteous way, and worked through those things, we came to the conclusion that, hey, I don't think this is what you're saying, and I don't think that you think this, but I do see these things, and this is where we're going to work on those things, and then we're going to allow God to be God in these in these areas of our life, yeah. you know, and uh, in, in that, that godly expression guards our marriage so that it's not like, well, he doesn't care or, yes. you know, she's just passionate about yeah. the wrong thing. You know, it, it, it didn't divide us. The anger of God against divorce helps us to, with intentionality, focus that, hey, we're going to have hard conversations. We're going to 
bare our soul mm -hmm. and and recognize that that's you know we're we're not going to go down these paths or these roads you know and and uh, even to apologize for saying stupid things in the midst of those conversations you know we were able to come together and to express those things you know mm -hmm. and I, and I think that's where even for the divorcees okay because God hates divorce even though I am divorced I'm going to still honor marriage yeah. I'm still going to come against that in other people's lives. And then should I get married again, I know the pitfalls. I, I, I know the pain of that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to guard against those things in myself and in my spouse, in our marriage, that we don't repeat those things because I know the yeah. displeasure of God and the anger of God about these things. I, I, I mean, I, I, as you were speaking, it I made me think of, you know, because... Why are we talking about this? Why, 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 why do we, you know, why don't you just make me feel warm and fuzzy, right? <laughs> like, but you think about in, in terms that are common in today's culture, we, we like this term boundaries. Sure. Right. And we like, oh, so, so it's almost like God says this as my children, as my, and correct me if I go off here, but at, at this, th these are the things I like. Cause we was like, Hey, what do you like? What do you know? That's when we we're talking about boundaries. Here are my boundaries. And not that God's thinking in the way, but this is, what pleases me and this is what angers me. Yeah. So God's kind of drawing the line for us mm -hmm. and saying, this is what I love. This is what I hate. So now that we're informed of this, cause we're like, well, why don't you just tell me right in our relationships? That's what we want to do. We want to know people's boundaries. And sure. so I don't, and that you, I love that picture of, of the conversation in marriage of, well, I didn't know that. So, Oh, now that I know that it will, it will help me to, not do that or when i'm feeling this way and i, yeah. I know how you feel or i know what bothers you i know what your, these pressure points are so if god's dictating to us giving us his boundaries for lack of a better word sure. here of, then i can be informed and live that's what I, I grasped from what you were saying like i can be intentional about oh god hates this so i'm going to be very intentional here about yeah. treating these things appropriately putting them in their proper place and giving them the attention that they need so as to not fall on this side, right? right. Is that, is that yeah. a fair? Yeah, I mean, you, you picture our, our, our relationship with God throughout the Bible. Old and New Testament is pictured as a marriage, right? Mm -hmm. Israel was the uh, the uh, young virgin that God saw on the side of the road, yeah. you know, cleaned her up, made her his bride, loved her, and yet she went and committed mm -hmm. adultery right. and, and prostituted herself and committed harlotry with the idols and things like that, which again, in Romans, we're going to hit that right. yeah. concept this next week, mm -hmm. right? Idolatry and things like that. Uh, in the New Testament, the bride of Christ is the church, yeah. right? Um, and, and so we see this picture consistent throughout. And so if we're going to give reverence to God as the head, mm -hmm. which the husband picture takes in Ephesians chapter, uh, you know, uh, six, um, sorry, five, uh, at the end of chapter five, where he comes in and, and, and likens the, the bride of Christ and the church to a marital relationship, mm -hmm. that we have to give reverence to the, the head, to the husband, which is Jesus Christ, to the Father, right? And, and so here we are, and in doing so, in the fear of the Lord, like we talked about, we know what God hates, we know what makes him angry, so to be a good spouse, be a good wife, if yeah, you will, which yeah. is weird for men to think about, You're but right, right. hey, it's just <laughs> our lot, right? Because yeah. the ladies got to be the sons of right, God, you know, right, so yeah. okay, we're all dealing with something here, yeah. but in order for us to be that pleasing spouse, we know that there are certain things that we're going to do that won't be displeasing, that won't mm -hmm. anger, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not that we're walking on eggshells or anything like that. It's just that we know these things are good and these things are not good. You know, it's it's the garden. Eat right. of these trees, don't right. eat of this one, right? right. And yeah. and I think that's that's very simple, yeah. you know, and yet we try and, and make it so complicated, you know, and, and, and yet God, God gives us his wonderful expression. And, and I think it's funny because, you know, here we are, We've got every tree in the garden to eat from, and we're longing after the one that we can't. You know, the, the one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and yeah. that's like, okay, that, that one makes God angry. Just, just go yeah. to the other trees. Yeah. There's plenty of other fruit right. to eat from, and yet we're looking longingly at the one that we can't. Right. And, and I think that's where people get, get it wrong with the anger of God. God isn't a killjoy. He isn't trying to hinder us. God gives us this beautiful, massive, wonderful life and says, these things make me angry. Yeah. So let, let's not go there, you know, and, and yet we want to look longingly at the, the stuff mm. that right. we're restricted from. Yeah. You know, you talk about boundaries, boundaries right. restrict, right. but within the boundaries, there's mm. freedom. Exactly. And outside of the boundaries, there's that fearful expectation of right. punishment. Right. 
And, and it's like, why would you go out there? You know, it's like if it's raining and there's lightning out yeah. there, if you want to stay dry, stay under the roof. Yep. You know, stay under the umbrella. Mm-hmm. Same thing with God. If you want to stay away from those, uh, you know, things that, that we say would harm us, then God gives us this beautiful, wonderful boundary to, to have freedom within that, that is a beautiful expression of his love. He will protect us from the things that are going to come on the earth. We're not appointed to wrath. Right. We, we're it. appointed to the goodness of God, the love right. of God. There's a beautiful future, and there's a beautiful space for us to work within and to walk within, and that's the fear of the Lord that keeps us within that. Yeah, I love it, Pastor. Well, I- any closing thoughts? I know, I mean, you're l- leaving us a little bit ready for the upcoming two more weeks, right? Two more Part weeks, three? yeah. So we got this coming yeah. weekend and the next weekend. Okay, cool. Well, any any closing thoughts here? I mean, I know it's. Kind oh. of, you're, 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 I feel like you're setting us up perfect for the rest of the well, series. Well, back to the plane ride. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> you, you think about the takeoff. Like we yeah. said, it can be eye opening and push you back. And I think we experienced yeah. that. Yeah. But on a plane ride, you know, in the middle of it, it's yeah. kind of smooth sailing. But yeah. you get a big overview. And so this weekend, I believe, as we take a look at, uh, you know, the the witness of creation, the excuses mm. we make. And then, and then again, we're going to have some very practical things. How do we live? Because now we know this. Um, it, it'll it'll be kind of that that forty thousand yeah. foot yeah. overview. We're going to get a a big picture, yeah. And there will still be that uh, uneasiness of of that first flight. You know, anybody who who's flown on a plane, you understand it, it's settled down. Mm-hmm. You've relaxed a little bit, and so this weekend, I, I believe people are going to kind of relax a little bit. Mm-hmm. But then that third weekend. We're going to land the plane. Yeah, that's cool. And, and that landing mm-hmm. is more scary than the takeoff. <laughs> so yeah. I'll just leave us yeah, oh, come on. with that thought yeah. that, that this weekend you're going to feel okay. Yeah. But there might still be something in the back of your mind. No, we still got to land this plane <laughs> and, and realize. And if you want to read ahead, read yeah. Romans 1. Yeah, cool. The rest of Romans 1, okay? Yeah. So we were in verse 18. If you want to read verse 18 all the way through the end, yeah. you can stop at chapter 2 and verse 1. Uh, just just read all the way through that if you want to get a little preview and see cool. where we're going and uh, do a little homework, you can, okay? Right. Well, we love you guys. Talk to you soon.